I know you know me, I know you know But let's switch it up, let's switch it up, let's switch it up. A lot of people always ask me, hey, how are you doing what you do on your broadcast on Sundays? And so outside of being a music producer and songwriter and a pastor and content creator, I guess, I'm an e-camera. I like doing e-cam. And what it is, is I found this program, e-cam, um, right around during the pandemic. And in using it, I found out how to make a wonderful transition and continue doing what I do. And so the interesting thing is um, when everybody had to go at home and had to get inside their house or had to quarantine or had to become solo projects or kind of work spaced out, um, I didn't have the advantage of having a staff to actually do camera work for me. And so what happened was when I found Ecamm, I ended up getting a camera and, you know, I got my Sony and I got the nice picture and everything, but I do a lot of storytelling. So I needed it to be a little bit more cinematic. And so what I actually ended up doing was I found out, hey, I can put two cameras on this program called Ecamm. And so I would do stuff like have the one camera right here and then I would go to the other camera over here. And so I had two cameras, but then I'm like, I don't like taking and hitting the buttons all the time. And I don't like to have to keep pushing here and here and here, uh, or just here and here to switch the cameras. And so what I thought about, I said, wait a minute, if they have this function on this program, where when you have your overlays, you can take and you can have a timer down here. And with that timer, you can have at the end of the timer, you can have the scene switch to another scene. So I thought about that and I said, well, if I'm on this scene right here and I needed it to go to the next scene like that, I can actually get it to do it automatically because it'll go to the next scene when it gets to the end of the timer. Well, that made me kind of think about how scenes are when you watch television. You're watching somebody and then after a while they're talking and then you see the camera do something like this. The problem right now is I'm pushing the button to make it do that. But there's another way that you can do that and Ecamm allows you to do it. It's not a brand new concept. I'm looking at my teleprompter on the desk and my camera over here is going, but in about 20 seconds, you'll see something happen. And I think I'm almost at the 20 second mark right about now, see? And then quickly, it'll go to another scene and switch the camera because it won't stay on this one, but it'll go to this one. And I was able to have it do that without touching it. Now. Here's a quick little look at how I do transitions when I'm doing my sermons on Sunday. Your promises rejuvenate me. If I keep 100 with you, it would be the agenda was parlaying, as we say. Because if we look at the proper use of the word, you know, this was our bonnet. Basketball skills into a college scholarship. Are you getting the picture? Basically, you take the gains in life and you use it for greater. So you see what happens and how when I'm telling my sermon, I'm giving my sermon or I'm speaking, I'm able to sit there in the chair and not have to touch the computer to switch the cameras. To do that, you have to do a couple of things. So let's go through those things that you do in order to get it done in Ecamm. 
Okay, so basically what it is, it's kind of similar to a playlist because what you have is you have your scenes. And when you look at your scenes, you have scenes that you like. And so I have these set up where I have this scene. Okay. I have this scene. I have this scene. I have this scene, this scene, this scene, and this scene right here. But the, the interesting thing that I did, and I can show it to you, it's in another video, is when you have this first scene here, um, you can just take and manipulate it and make a zoom scene out of it. And so you pull the shot in and then you can go to the next scene, which is the front camera, and then you pull that shot in. Then you can go to this camera and then you pull that shot in. You go to the next camera and you pull that one in. Then you go to the next camera and you pull that in. You go to this one and you pull that one in and you go to this one and you pull that in. Now, that might seem like a lot, but what you're actually doing is you're allowing yourself um, to have at least 16 cameras right there. So it makes it like you have an actual person working the cameras. OK, and so let's get into um, the folder.